Yes, people, thank you for tuning in to this match review, Arsenal versus Liverpool. Very quick one, guys. This was a game I was looking forward to just because um, Arsenal has been playing some good football. Arsenal has been impressive this season. I hate to say it as a Manchester United fan, but it is the truth. Arsenal has been one of the impressive teams of the season. And um, they've been showing a lot of consistency. They've been showing a lot of character, a lot of um, confidence in their play. So I'm maturity, guys, and maturity because a typical Arsenal, you know, the first, you know, the first loss they have the season, and then it just collapses from there. You know, what was their first loss against Manchester United? But they bounce back, and that's what you want to see from teams: is the character to bounce back, and you know, they bounce back against a uh, Tottenham. And so, obviously, a lot of my Arsenal fans, um, a lot of my Arsenal friends were nervous for this game just because even though Liverpool's having a tough time, they just felt that Liverpool has it on Arsenal for some reason, especially in the past few uh, seasons. Uh, um, especially in the past few seasons, Liverpool has been, you know, has been in tremendous form. So, it is expected. But I was confident that Arsenal could get away with the result in this game with the three points just because... Looking at Arsenal's play recently, no matter if the chips are down, they seem to just play their game. So I was looking forward to this game, and I honestly believe this game lived up to its expectations. This was a goal fest. Like, 3-2, uh, whether, obviously, this was going to be a very painful result for uh, Liverpool, just because um, there was some poor refereeing from Mike Oliver. But he also did that against in the Manchester Derby as well. He was very poor. So nothing new. We expected this game to be very cagey. Um, we expected the game to be cagey. But it was actually pretty open. It was actually pretty open. So let's just get straight into it. Obviously, um, Martinelli gets his goal uh, within the first five minutes, which was crazy. Uh, poor defending again from Liverpool. And then, you know, the game really opened up after that. I think Liverpool had the better... Uh, first half, I would say, they kept pressing, they kept pressing. Um, you could see a huge difference with Thiago, um, Thiago coming back into the fold because uh, that midfield had been looking meaty for a long time. And then you also had the likes of Diego Jota. I'm not sure why he was playing in a 10, but I don't know. Our, uh, Liverpool fans can defend that, um, defend that selection from, uh, from Klopp. But... Who else would have played the 10 when you really think about it? They didn't really have a number 10 to play it. So, But I think uh, Diego Jota, he brings a lot to that team. He was silky yesterday. Um, he definitely brings a lot to Liverpool. So does Thiago. The only difference is, the only problem is Thiago can't stay fit. And I think it's very frustrating for Liverpool fans that a player with such talent cannot stay fit. And he's the guy who gets their midfield ticking. But let's get into it. Obviously, Liverpool... Huffed and puffed, Liverpool had a lot more of the possession. I think at some point, the possession was like in the first half, um, before they got the equalizer, I think it was like 68% to 22% uh, ball possession. That's how Liverpool had control. Liverpool was comfortable. Um, obviously, there was a handball shout that, you know, I'm surprised that they didn't, they didn't call it this time. VAR did not call it because just uh, the, the, the game before, I mean, the, the day before, uh, the Newcastle Brentford game, a similar play happened in the box, and it was called. So this is the inconsistency that we keep talking about with VAR. It's very inconsistent, but you know, in games like this, you oh, it's gonna it's gonna even out at the end of the season. You're gonna get calls that are to your favor, and you're gonna get calls that are not in your favor. That's just the way the game works. And when you have a referee like Michael Oliver, you know it's gonna be problems. You know it's gonna be bad calls, um, interruption of the game. But let's, you know, um, Liverpool eventually got their goal. Great run from Darwin Nunes, um, you know, to track his man. He The way he ran, I thought Gabriel had him. I thought Gabriel had him. Gabriel was tracking him down, and then the last minute just collapsed in the last minute. Like, what the hell were you doing? Like, you, you could have stretched and gotten that ball, intercepted that ball. Like, didn't he realize that Nunes was right next to, was just right behind him? Didn't he realize that? He tracked his man, had a good run in tracking his man, and then he just let the ball slide in front of him. Like, it felt like I was watching Harry Maguire all over again. <laughs> but, you know, this is the thing with um with Arsenal, and I know 
Um, a few people had, a few Arsenal fans had been questioning Gabriel because I know he's been, Saliba has been playing, and I know people have been defending that Saliba has just been playing at a top notch level that is making Gabriel not look as good. But Gabriel has always had this moments of uh, just, you know, um, lack of focus, you know, lack of focus when it does matter. So, but, you know, the game continued. Um, Arsenal definitely needed that that um, halftime. They definitely needed, they looked like the, more, the team that needed that halftime break. But they got the goal. They got the counterattack. Um, good goal from Saka. Even though Saka wasn't really present much in the game. Um, but yeah, he still did his thing. He still composure with his finish. And then, you know, there was halftime. Second half came along. Liverpool was looking like the better team again. Scored with the Firmino goal. What a goal like from Firmino, man. Like this guy, he has it at Arsenal. What a goal. But... Once again, it just like the game just kept going. It was like one team would score, then the other team would wake up again and start playing some good football, and then the other team would concede, and then it was just like a it was like a tennis match. It was just back and forth, uh, but it was definitely it was definitely a fun game if you were neutral. It definitely sucked if you were one of the fans because you want to hold your. It felt like the teams could not hold their lead for very long, um, but. You know, Arsenal, I think, dominated at least, six. I would say, 70% of that second half. I think Arsenal uh, really bopped the ball around. You could really tell that Liverpool is is lacking in, in depth. Liverpool is lacking in depth. This is what happens when you have, when you rely so much on your starting 11. And when your starting 11 is not performing, you have no options. I'm looking at Liverpool's bench. Like, who could they have brought on? Um, Diaz is out injured now. I think Trent came off injured as well. So you're looking at that bench. It was looking meaty as well, too. So this is the problem. Um, this is why it's good to have a strong team. Even though you're starting 11 is doing well, you've got to have a strong bench and keep your bench happy. And this is why I'm a big fan of rotation. You've got to keep your bench happy because when you start an 11, don't perform. That's when you're going to start looking. That bench is going to start causing problems for you. And I think that's what Liverpool is going through right now. They've lost Mane. Their starting 11 is not performing at its, at its optimum level. And now Klopp is looking lost. Klopp is looking lost, doing life for like subs. And he's not really, he's not, his subs are not impacting the game. So, but just going back to it, um, the handball, I mean, um, the uh, the Tiago challenge in the box on, on Jesus, I think that was very soft. That was a very soft. I think Tiago, from what I could see, I think T uh, from what I could see, Tiago's leg hit Jesus's leg after Jesus had already lost control of the ball. That's how I saw that replay go, guys. I don't know. You guys can leave your comments and let me know what you thought about that penalty. But I thought it was a very soft penalty, especially for the game that it was. But the pressure was on. It was at the Emirates. Arsenal had been huffing and puffing, had, had been trying, had been had missed a couple of cities, a couple of chances uh, leading up to that leading up to that uh, foul. So it's very understandable that it was that it was going to be given to. Um, to Arsenal, but I know. Leave me, leave a comments, man. What did you guys think? Was that a very soft penalty? Was that a deserved penalty? But Saka took it comfortably. Um, Saka, you know, he's he's a player with confidence, man. He's a player that, even when he's not really involved in the game, he can still make things happen. So um, I think after that third goal, it was just a nail in the coffin for Liverpool. Liverpool could not come back, and that's a massive ask, right? Like they had come back twice already. They had come back twice. A team that's not in form, a team that's lacking confidence. For them to have come back twice was a big ask. Then for them to come back three times, that's a lot, you know. And you could just tell they were flat. They were they were defeated at that point. And you know, Arsenal got the three the three points. Um, was it was it deserved the three points? It's hard to say. I think for the most part, I think Arsenal played the better football for the most part. It's like Salah was missing. Uh, I mean, Nunes doesn't really offer you too much outside the box. Um, Thiago was still getting back into form. So there was a lot. There was, a, you know, I think Liverpool played well. I think Liverpool played well. And Liverpool has not been playing that bad. They just haven't been finishing. 
they played well, but I think Arsenal was the better team at that night. And Arsenal showed you character. Arsenal showed you why they are the first in the league come October. And, and, and you know what? And, it, and it's well-deserved. It's well-deserved. Who did you think your man of the match was, guys? Um, I don't know. I don't think I don't know if it was Saka. I know they gave it. I believe they gave it to Saka and Martinelli, if I recall, because I didn't watch the post match um, uh, segment part. But I think it was Saka and Martinelli that was the man of the match. But let me know who your man of the match was. Um, I I still believe I made this comment that Jesus is a much bigger impact than Holland, and everybody looked at me like you're smoking crack. I don't I don't think so. I think for the team, when you look at what the teams wear, Man City and Arsenal, what they wear, I think Jesus, Jesus, Jesus not being on this Arsenal team, and it's a looking like a different team. I'm just I'm being real. Like Jesus, the way he wins fouls for Arsenal at critical points and at critical areas in the pitch, that is priceless, guys. That's very priceless. And he's he's a baller, man. He's a footballer. Like He's really showing his flair at Arsenal. So um, I wouldn't have given it to Jesus. I don't know who the man of the match would have been in that game. But I guess Saka scored two goals. So you got to give it to Saka. But overall, I think Arsenal played like a team. Uh, Liverpool, I don't know where Liverpool is going to finish the season. Um, they, might pull, they might pull through and finish top six. But I don't see top four for uh, Liverpool. I do not. The way other teams are playing, I do not see top four, guys. And this is why I say it, man. It's very important to have squad depth. You keep your bench players happy as well, and that's how you win. That's how you win leagues. That's how you win seasons, guys. It's it's just as simple as that. And just one last thing I wanted to say for those of you FPL fans, weren't you so pissed off? Weren't you pissed off to see the Man City game? The Man City game had um Holland. You know, everyone was thinking, okay, Holland was going to do something magical against Southampton. And he scored just the one goal. Just the one goal. Very disappointing. Uh, just very disappointing from an FPL standpoint. But we know City does what City does. They keep winning games. And that's what's put in Arsenal. I think if we did not have City in the league, Arsenal could have run away with this trophy. I honestly believe that. But the fact that we have City is going to be the decider, guys. It's going to be the decider. But anyways, it's definitely been fun. I wanted to just do a quick match review. Sorry, it took longer than five minutes. But I wanted to just talk about it. Arsenal 3, Liverpool 2. Let me know what you thought about the game. I think it lived up to its expectations. It was a goal fest. And we, I know Arsenal got the job done. And we move. But till next time, please check out my match review, Everton versus Manchester United, after this video. Take care.